I've been doing a lot of mathematical research over the last four decades and sometimes certain numbers just keep popping up, could be the number 108, 72, 144. And just in the last 10 years or, or so, I've noticed that the number 117 or 117 has popped up all the time. Um, so I'm calling it harmonic 117. The word ha harmonic comes from the word harmos in ancient Greek and harmos mean, meant order in the universe. So it's about harmonic order. So why, what's so special about the number 117? So first of all, um, in harmonics, we're allowed to move the decimal. So if I have, so 117 can also equal 117. I can put two zeros on that and it's still harmonic. Harmonics, we're allowed to get rid of the zeros, but we're also allowed to slide the decimal. So if I had point zero zero one one seven i can move the decimal one two and put it there we cross out the zeros and we move the decimal but we could i could also say one point one seven is also a harmonic of one one seven so we're allowed to slide the decimal the sliding the decimal means you can make something bigger or smaller galactic atomic so this is called harmonic maths so let's just see if any of these numbers pop up. So first of all, here's a circle. And the radius of this circle is one unit. So there is my center of the circle. And I'm, I'm making a statement that the radius of that circle is one unit. And another lesson would be how do we draw the pentagon within the circle? So I'll quickly draw it. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So there's a pentagon drawn in the circle. So what I'm interested in is that we know the radius, but what's the side length? Those five side lengths must all be the same. And it just works out that the side length is 1.17. I'll write it again, 1.117. So if R equals one, the radius is one. Here's the radius is one. The side S equals 1.117. So there's nothing new. This is something that you can find in any good mathematical textbook. So this is about ancient knowledge, timeless mathematical principles. So if the radius is one, the pentagon will always have a side of 1.117. It, it won't ever change. It's just a, a mathematical fact. So that's so that happens to be this number over here. See where we said we could slide the decimal? So now we've got 1.17. So that's our first example of harmonic 117. And it's interesting um, that the square root over here, if I took the square root of 117, it equals a number called 10.8. So that just means 10.8, 10.8 times 10.8 equals 117. And 10.8, if we slide the decimal, is the number 108, 108. And it just happens that the angle in the pentagon here is 108 degrees. So it's showing that there's a relationship between 117 and 108. And there it is there in the pentagon. Um, while we're talking about 108, um, I discovered about three decades ago that inside the Fibonacci sequence, the, the living mathematics of nature um, is recorded by Fibonacci. So there was someone in the 12th century called Fibonacci and he got this from Egypt so he doesn't own this sequence but he was born or nay in French it's called birth nay in the year 1170 so again if you drop the zero Fibonacci's birth date is a harmonic of 117 so we've done that we've done the square root and um and the more you work with this harmonic you'll start realizing that sometimes when I look at the time on my clock I see, I always see this number, it could be like 1 o'clock, 17 minutes past 1, could be a.m. or p.m. So you'll see that this is, this is about resonance. The more we're passionate about something, the more we see it, see it reflected in our external world. Often if, you, if you're seeing the time 11.11, 11, that just means you're connected, you're, you're in tune with the cosmos. Okay, so I often see the time seeing the number 117 popping up. And also, um, 
we're going to get onto the Fibonacci sequence in a second. I'll close on that. But um, the, the number in hertz, in terms of cycles per second, um, a colleague of mine, John Stuart Reed, he's well known for inventing the um, cymoscope. So John Stuart Reed did some experiments with the, um, the king's chamber, the coffin in the Giza pyramid, the, um, the sarcophagus. When they measured the, the hertz or the cycles per second, it resonated to 117. 117 hertz and that's something if you want more you can contact me for all the links on john stuart reed and this is about cymatics this is sound um is that is showing us the form okay so so let's have a look at fibonacci sequence so we know that fibonacci got this from egypt he took the one and the one here we've got a zero so zero and one is one one and one is two one and two is three two and three is five we're merely adding the past to the present to the future but when we got to five and eight is 13 i take away nine so so instead of 13 here i've got a 13 i i could take away nine or add the digits so one and three is four next number is 21 so um, 8 and 13 is 21. I could take away 9 and 9, but if I add the digits, I get a 3. So as we keep doing this, we get 4, 3, 7, 1, 8, 9. And just visualize that these numbers go forever. But I'm gonna, I've already got my first 12. I'm going to do the 13th one over here. And it works out that all these numbers down here are complements of 9. So 1 and 8 is 9, 1 and 8, 2 and 7. 3 and 6, 5 and 4, 1, 5, 6, 2, 8, 1. So these are all pairs of 9. 12 nines, 12 nines here add up to the 108. But we, for some reason, this last pattern, this last number is a double 9. In the last column, we have a repetition of 9. So the, the Fibonacci sequence is an infinitely repeating 24 pattern. So it, it's, a, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 up to here, but there's another 9. So the real sequence is 108. 12, 12 times 9 is 108 plus this 9 here, which is kind of like in the telomerase. The telomeres in DNA um, are the end sequence, and that, that's how about genetic replication can happen with these telomeres. So this double nine is, is a hint to um, um, immortality, you could say. So the sum of the infinite 24 pattern is 108 plus nine equals 117. So there's the number 117 again, based on the Fibonacci sequence. Um, so just one more, few more things in the um, tetrahedron, um, in the tetrahedron here, if this shape is one unit, if this shape, if this side length is one, what's the volume of this tetrahedron? So you can visualize a sphere around the pyramid. So if this is one, when we do the mathematics of volume, the internal volume, if you were to fill it up with water, equals 0.117, uh, say cubic meters. If, if the, if the um, tetra had a side of one meter, one meter, the volume is 0.117. So that's another, so that's that's saying that the volume of the tetrahedron is a harmonic of the sacred number 117. And just to complete, um, there's many, many examples I could find you, I could write a whole book on the, the, the magic number 117. So here we have a shape called dodecahedron. And you, we know that it's based on 12 of these pentagons. So there's a pentagon. So the three-dimensional view of the five-pointed star or pentagon is the dodeca. Now, a dihedral angle, I've got here that the dihedral angle is 116.5, but we're going to round it off to 117 degrees. So where is the 117 degree angle? So here's one pentagon and there's another pentagon. I'm going to put my hands over them. So where they meet along this axis here, if I went inside and said that internal angle is called the dihedral angle between that face and that face. So all inside of this dodecahedron are dihedral angles of 117. So this is an example of how harmonics is the future in mathematics.